so glad that you are here. I'm glad that you're here for Fierce Vision 2022. Listen, on behalf of our senior pastor, Dr. Jamal H. Bryan, and your entire New Birth family, welcome to tonight. Listen, this is our first sister circle of the year. I want to send a huge shout out and so much love to Mrs. Long. We love her so much. Want to honor her tonight as well and every single woman here at New Birth and all of you, if you are joining us from near and far, listen, we love you and are glad that you are here. I don't want to prolong our time any longer. I want to jump right into prayer because listen, ladies, we have so much to cover tonight, so much to cover tonight. And we're going to walk through what that's going to look like in the next few minutes. But let's just take a minute and let's go before the Lord. Father, we thank you today. God, we thank you for your goodness, Father. We thank you for your mercy, Master. We thank you, God, for who you are, Father, and what you are doing in our life. God, we thank you that while so many people didn't get a chance to see a new year, Father, you have strategically planned that we would be here in the earth, God. And for that, we tell you, thank you. Things might not be perfect. It may not be everything we want it to be, but we know, Father, as long as we keep our hand in your hand, as long as you are ordering our steps, dear God, as long as you are walking with us, Father, as long as you have your hand on us, God, as long as you continue to give us vision, Father, we will be all right. And so, God, I thank you for all of my sisters that have gathered tonight, God. I pray that there is something, God, that transforms them, God, something that sparks something in them, oh God. Ignite that fire in their belly again, God, that they will go into this year fearless, God, unapologetic, Father, about everything that you have assigned for their life. We don't have to ask you to be here because by virtue of your word, we know where two or three are gathered, God, even around the world that you would be in the midst. And so we honor you and we thank you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, ladies, listen, we are about to get this show on the road. Like I told you, this is our first sister circle of the year, and I'm excited about what God is going to do all year for the women of New Birth. Listen, it is some amazing things that we have coming up. But one of the things that I want to make sure that you do is that I am looking for a core team of women leaders. I need about seven of them from the ages of 20 all the way up from 60 plus. I want to make sure that everything that you desire and you need in a woman's ministry is, is represented across the board from every age. We want to make sure we got you covered. And so listen, I'm looking for you. I need about seven of you. If you're in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, your 60s and up, I want you. And so my, Dana's going to drop the link in the chat. I want you to go ahead and click on that leadership application and apply. Listen, so we can get this show on the road. In addition to that, we're going to be hosting some focus groups. Yeah, some focus groups in the next couple of weeks for every age demographic that I mentioned, because I want to make sure that we are curating programming for you, that we're curating events for you that, that help you to grow, that motivate you, and ultimately that bring you closer to God and have you walking in your full design in which the Father has made and created you. And so I want to hear from you and I want you to be engaged. And th those are the two ways right now that we can make sure that we do that. Listen, we're gathered tonight for Fierce Vision 2022 for a couple of reasons. The first is I want to make sure that we, as we are kicking off our year, that we understand the power of vision in our life. Listen, there should be a download that you should have received earlier in the day. Uh, if not, we want to make sure that we drop that link in the chat as well, um, or if we can even share that quickly on the screen so that you will have it. But there is a download that you will have, almost like a little workbook that you should have received. And if not, we'll put that in the link so that you can get that, that I'm going to be speaking from a little bit later in our time together so that you'll know what we'll kind of be working through tonight. But I want you to understand the power of vision. And tonight, I really want want 
us to strategically look at the vision in our lives. I want you to think about what God has said, where he is calling you, and how that is strategically mapped out in your life as you are planning for the year. Listen, for so many of you, you already have vision boards or you might have a vision book. And so what I want tonight to do is really to kind of help lay the landscape. It's going to really provide a chart for you as you begin to map out your vision for the year. So some of what we'll be doing tonight will help you if you are interested in going back uh, to your vision board. Or for many of you, this might be what you use um, as a catalyst for the year. But however you do it, I really just wanted us to be able to have that time tonight to walk through exactly what that looks like. So I want to make sure that you have that download. Listen, so before we can launch into talking about vision tonight, I hope you got your iPads out. I hope you got your notes out. I want you to be taking it because I believe that there are some things that we're going to talk about that is really going to bless you. I almost even hope that I offend you tonight. If offending you causes you to get some fire under you, causes you to get motivated at the next level, then that's exactly what I want to make sure that you do. So listen, we are now, listen, as we are in 2022, we're entering into our second month of this year. And so one of the things that I want to ask you before we jump into everything about vision is what are you thinking? Where, what are you thinking right now? I want to know how are you feeling right now? Going into February, what are you thinking? How are you feeling? And I want you to be honest with yourself about what that is. The question that I have to ask you tonight is are you inspired or have you already, have you already quit the year? We're already in February, just the second month of the year. And are you motivated? Are you inspired? Or have you already quit the year? Because the truth is, for some of us, this year may not have started the way that you want it to, it to start. And what happens is we will, all, we will uh, relegate our year to the enemy already. For some of you, you have already quit the year. You have already given up on the year. And you have already given the enemy authority to capture your your year, listen, so that you've given up in the first month, haven't even got into the second month yet. I ask you this because in the past 38 days, what have you declared over your life? Yeah. Have you declared life or have you declared death over your year? In the past 38 days, what have you been saying to yourself? What have you been speaking out loud? This is important. It's critically important because you all know this thoughts become things. Yeah. And whatever your dominating thought is about your year, that's what you should expect. Y'all heard me? Whatever you are thinking about the most concerning your year, that is what you should expect. Listen, the Bible tells us according to your faith, be it unto you. Can I tell you this year, you will have exactly what you believe. I don't care how big it is. I don't care how small it is. The Bible says, according to your faith, be it unto you. This year, you will have what you believe you should have. Or what you cannot believe, you should not expect to have. Listen, if there is no belief, if your belief is small, if your faith is small, if you're not believing for anything, there should be nothing that you expect for your life because your faith and what you are thinking, what you are believing, it's what's going to determine your year. Can I tell you, if you are already speaking, you will be constantly reaping the fruit of your words. Somebody write that down down in the chat. You will constantly reap the fruit of your words. In the mouth is life and death. Listen, we know what the power of the tongue is. And so this year for you, I don't know about for you, but for me, this year is personal. Somebody say personal. This year is personal for me. Now listen, if you are already on the right track, if you are already motivated, if you are already focused, I love it. And that means that tonight is just going to add to what you are already doing. But if you say, Pastor Kerry, listen, I ain't really feeling it. You know, I'm not excited about this year. Some stuff has already happened in January to try to derail me. What I want you to know is great. I'm glad you're here tonight too, because what's going to happen tonight is you're going to become realigned. Yes, you're going to become realigned, re 
afresh, reaffirm so that you are able to take back your year and begin to chart the path that the Father has for you. Listen, the first thing that I want you to begin to think about is for some of us, you've got to get reinvigorated about your life. You've got to get reinvigorated about your life. You've got to get excited about your life again. I don't know about you, but for me, this is something that I had to talk to myself about going into this year. I had to get my zeal back. I had to get my stamina back about my year. Because you know what? Life has a way of taking the wind out of you. Life has a way of of causing you to experience so much grief, so much pain, so much frustration that pain begins to blur your vision. You will have so many disappointments, so many setbacks that you will begin to allow anger to set into your life. You will begin to allow bitterness to begin to take root. Listen, the truth is for many of you, you have been cheering for other people even while you have seen no movement in your own life. I don't care. I, I know we ain't got no hearts or nothing on here, but I want y'all to just put, put, use your own emojis to put in the chat if you are following me. You have been cheering for other people, but you've seen no movement in your life. You've been to baby showers for other people, yet you are dealing with infertility issues. You've been to weddings for other people, but you cannot seem to find the right partner. You've been to grand openings for businesses for other people, but you can't seem to get your business business off the ground. You've gone to to graduations for other people, and yet it seems like you can't seem to get on track to finish what you are trying to finish. Listen, you have felt like, for many of us, that we have been sitting on the sidelines watching other people be blessed, watching other people expand, watching other people grow, watching other people get homes, watching other people be blessed. Meanwhile, we're waiting on God. And for some of us, life is good, life is okay, but you know that there is something uh, in the city of your soul, as my grandmother would say, or there is something resting in your belly that says to you, God, life is good, but I know that you have called me to exceedingly and abundantly above. And so I'm grateful for where I am, but I know that there is more. I know that there is greater. And so when you know this and you are in this space, it can cause to level to have a level of anxiety because sometimes the truth is you just get tired of waiting on God and I know I might not be able to say that but if I can confess my truth tonight sometimes I just get tired (laughs) where y'all at I don't see nobody in the chat sometimes I just get tired of waiting on God. I get frustrated with waiting for God to do what he said that he was going to do because the Bible says, listen, hope deferred makes the heart grow sick. It says, listen, it says, but a longing fulfilled is the tree of life. Can I declare that as we have all gathered today to talk about vision tonight, that this is a year for us where we are going from deferral to fulfillment. I don't know where you are, but type that in the chat. This is my year. This is your year where we are going from deferral to fulfillment. Everything that we are believing God to do from the vision of our life, it's going to happen. But what has to happen before we can begin to even talk about vision is we have to believe that it's time to rededicate our life back to God rededicate our vision back to God. And the thing is, in the midst of that, we've got to trust that God is going to make it good, that everything we're believing, everything we've been written, writing down. Listen, for some of us, we've been writing down the same things for the past couple of years. We might have written it in different forms, but for some of us, we've been writing down the same things for years, but we are coming together collectively tonight to say, God, I can't write the same thing down for another year, but I need you to make good on the promises that you have made for my life as it relates to my 
vision. Because listen, God isn't going to show you something that he can't take you to. God is not going to give you the type of appetite that you have. Listen, this is not off of superficial things. But for many of you, you know that you are anointed for a certain type of life. You know God has anointed you for a certain type of palate. And so you can, sometimes can't even understand why you are the way that you are, why you think the way that you think, because for many of us, we didn't even come from that. You don't know where your appetite has come from. Can I tell you? Because it didn't come from your family. It didn't come from your lineage, but it is something that the father has downloaded to you because he has called you to uniquely change the trajectory of your bloodline, of your family. And so there's a reason why you think the way that you do, but it can become frustrating because your vision sometimes or most times is too large to even articulate. Your vision sometimes is much larger than you can even comprehend, and so you can't even tell people about it. And when you do tell them about it, they don't have a point of reference for what you're talking about. So they like, listen, you, they don't even know how to handle what you have been sharing with them. And so we have a community of women, listen, who are like, I don't even know who I can talk to about my vision. Who do I can, can connect with where I don't have to worry about them being jealous of what I'm telling them? I don't have to worry about them being in competition, but I know that I have some women around me who are going to be fasting for my vision, who are going to be interceding for my vision so that everything can come to pass. Can I tell you, I don't care how your year has started this far. We have the ability to baptize the year. We have the ability to bless our year, and we have the ability to declare what our year will be in the name of Jesus Christ. And can I tell you, you have heavenly back up for what that looks like. So if January wasn't good, Father, in the name of Jesus, we baptize January and we call it blessed, Father. We pray that it is, is now aligned with your will and the year will go in the direction that you've caused it to go in. And so listen, these are the things that we've got to be thinking about. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to go this year? What does forward look like for you? Because the truth is we are already acquainted with the past and it's nothing that we can do about that. My mom always tells me, baby, it's nothing you can do about spilled milk. But what you can do is make a decision to go forward. And the challenge is we can't even focus on our vision for the future because we are so fixated on the past that we can't even see what God has in store for us as it relates to our future. This is why I believe Paul said, listen, forgetting those things that are behind me and pressing toward the mark. Listen, we are pressing forward. Anything that happened, oh, well, it happened, it's over. But where I am right now in my life, my desire is to move forward. My desire is to go ahead. Listen, I'm seeing something where you guys are saying, let me pause for a minute. I'm looking in the chat and it's saying that you guys there is an issue with the link are you guys good okay y'all can hear me all right I see elder elder Simmons saying we're pressing toward the mark yes and we are moving forward so I want to make sure that you all don't have any issues right yes 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 I see it I want to make sure you don't have any issues so we are pressing forward okay it said the chat was disabled all right are we good all right let me all right y'all Okay, we're good. All right, we're good now because I want to see you all. I want to see what's going on. Yes, you have the ability to bless and baptize your year so that you are able to move forward. And let me tell you that that's not just for your year, but that's for your life. Any experience where you feel like you failed. Any experience where you feel like it is not aligned with the will of God for your life, because listen, this is how the enemy uses condemnation to keep us in a space where we're constantly feeling guilty. Keep us in a space where we're constantly feeling unworthy. Keep us in a space where we feel like we are less than. And you know that you are the head and not the tail. But when you begin to bless that thing, when you begin to baptize that thing, it tells the enemy that you no longer have authority over this 
situation. Listen, the thing that used to trigger me last year can't trigger me this year. The thing that used to get me distracted last year don't have authority to get me distracted this year. The thing that used to keep me up late at night crying, listen, last week don't have the ability to keep me up late at night this week. I don't have the time or the energy to invest in people, places, or things that cannot yield a return in my life that is not focused on the will of God for my life. A part of our challenge is we've wasted so much time and energy on things that have sacked our confidence, that have sacked our self-esteem. Some of us, we don't know if we're going or coming. Some of us have been under such demonic attack mentally and in our emotions because the enemy knows that if he can get your mind off track, if he can uh, subject your emotions to him, then he will have your entire body. We function, but you are not functioning at the highest level because the enemy has been running uh, rampant in your emotions, in your heart space. And so when you should be operating at 100%, you're only operating at 20, 20%. I can only tell you because I know what I walked through. Listen, I know what I went through for the past couple of years. It's, it's a wonder that I wasn't sitting on a bridge getting ready to jump out. It's a wonder that I wasn't in a straitjacket. It's a wonder that I didn't decide to take a bottle of pills. And I know that most of you have experienced the same thing, but I am grateful to God, hallelujah, that when I wanted to go in a different direction, when my enemy had, when the enemy had my emotions, had my mind all tangled up, making me believe that I was less than who I was. It was the spirit of the Lord that said, oh no, you can be down for a little while, but you've got to get up. You, you've got to make sure that you keep going because there is greater for you. And I speak and believe that same thing over you. So listen, for this year, we are forgetting anything that has made us feel like we ain't the best thing. Huh? Can, can, listen, people will tell you to be humble and that's great. I believe in humility, but you also need to know that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You also need to know that when God made me, he broke the mold. You also need to know, listen, that when you show up, demons begin to tremble. You need to know, listen, you've got to encourage yourself because there will always be something that makes you feel like you are not enough. I don't care how beautiful you are. I don't care how many degrees you have. I don't care how much money you have. There will be something in somebody assigned to you by the enemy to make you second guess everything that you are. And this year, you don't have the time to second guess. You've got territory to occupy. You have land that you've got to conquer. And you cannot do that if you are constantly worried, if you are constantly saying, God, I'm not good enough. If you are constantly looking at the other person on social media, if you are constantly downplaying yourself, listen, this year I've decided I'm not downplaying me, huh? Listen, I'm not downplaying me. And don't you let anybody downplay you. Because when God made you, he knew how amazing you are. And you've got to walk in that. It don't mean you arrogant. It doesn't mean that you are walking in ego. But you are walking in the confidence of the Father. Listen, your daddy is the creator and the maker of the universe. Your father is the one that set the sun, the moon, and the stars into place. It was at his word. At your father's word that he began to speak and that in which was in chaos became into divine order. How dare you walk into a room and lower your head as if you should not be there. Don't you know that not only do you bring the table but you are the table. You are the answer. You are the solution to every problem and that's the spirit that you've got to walk in knowing that God, hallelujah, is your rear guard. That it ain't a trap. It's not a, 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 an arrow. There is nothing that the enemy can set before you that will cause you to stumble because God is with you. Listen, I see y'all. This is what we've got to know. We can't talk about vision until we have an understanding of this. 
My prayer is, Father, tell me who I am in you. Yeah. Father, tell, give me my full identity in you. Because vision means nothing if you don't even know who you are. Vision means nothing if you won't walk in the full authority that the Father has given to you. And listen, this is what we are doing. Listen, this is what we are doing this year. I see you, Sister Tamara. I see you, Sister Charlanda. This is what we are walking in this year because we know that God is with us. So listen, how do we begin? Yes, I see y'all. How do we begin to move in fierce vision? How do we take our life from what I like to call from fantasy to fruition? How do we do that? The first thing that I'm going to tell you, I hope you guys are jotting down your notes. Now, some people will be like, Lord, Pastor Carrie, I don't know what you're talking about with this. I don't know if I agree. But let me tell you, the first way you begin to do that is you've got to just stop dreaming alone. What am I telling you? Listen, dreams in, uh, in perspective have their place. They're important for us to have. For many of us, we've been taught to dream our entire life. We've always been told, dream big. There have been multi-million dollar marketing campaigns around you dreaming alone. And while, I, while that sounds good, it's a wonderful thing. Can I tell you, dreaming isn't always good in and of itself. Why? Because dreams happen when you are asleep. Are y'all taking notes? Dreams happen when you are asleep. Dreams are uh, a series of thoughts and images and sensations that occur wild in the mind while you are sleeping. And so what that means is that your consciousness is practically suspended, not just physical, but this happens to us even in the spiritual. Why, why is that important? That's important and it can be problematic to always be in a space of just dreaming because the Bible tells us that we are to be awake and we are to be sober. First Thessalonians 5 and 6 says, so then let us not sleep as others do. It says, but let us keep awake and to be sober, sober. Ephesians 5 and 4 says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead. And it says, Christ will give you light. Listen, Romans 13 and 11 says, and that knowing the time that now is high time, hear this, to be awake and out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than what we believe. What does that mean? There is nothing that you can do when you are dreaming in and of itself alone. If all you are doing is dreaming, you are never going to fulfill anything. If all you are doing is simply dreaming, you will never come into the full manifestation of what God has called you to have. So what does that mean? Nothing will come into fruition if you are just dreaming. Because what does that mean? You are constantly asleep. For some of you, you have, you've been living your whole life just dreaming. Meaning you've been living your whole life asleep, constantly in a state of unconsciousness. What does that mean? You are being spiritually blind. You are walking in a space of laziness. You are constantly laying down. And spiritually, what that can lead to is ultimately death. So if we are constantly in a state of being unconscious, if we are constantly in a state of being asleep, then that means that our life is contradicting what the biblical text has told us about being awake and being sober. And this is why the world has produced daydreamers. Oh, y'all know about it? Daydreamers. The world has produced sleepwalkers. These are people that are walking around in a trance, lost in thought, preoccupied with something else. They're abstracted. They, they, they seem like they're in space. They're walking around in la-la land. What does that mean? When you are walking around in la-la land, that means that the enemy can attack you from every different angle and you won't even know what is getting ready to hit you. And let me tell you why that is against the word of the, God, the, word of the Lord. For the Bible tells us that we are not ignorant of the enemy's devices. The Lord will tell 
tell you when the enemy is getting ready to come. You'll see that joker getting ready to come from every different direction. When you are awake and you are sober, but when you are asleep, you don't know what's about to hit you. Something can creep in in the middle of the night and you can be up in the day and have a life that is permanently in the middle of the night because you are asleep. You don't know what is happening around you. Because you are unconscious in the natural and in the spirit. And so that means that you are unconsciously unconscious, roaming through life. You don't have no real direction. You are roaming aimlessly. We are roaming from one thing to the next thing. We don't know what we are called to do. Can I tell you that that's not the will of the Lord for our life? The will of the Lord for our life is that we know our divine design, that we know the purpose and destiny in which God has called us to. It's not the will of the Lord for us to be confused. Now, we don't have to know every single detail, but we ought to be so tapped in with the Holy Spirit. We ought to be so tapped in with the Father that we understand, okay, God, when you speak and say go left, I know to go left. When you speak and say go right, I know to go right. But when we are asleep and unconscious, there is no way for us to fully comprehend what the Father is saying to us. And what does that mean? We then place our life in danger. Have you ever read anything about people who are chronic sleepwalkers? That means that they have to have someone really watching them really at all times, particularly when they sleep, because they have the ability to begin moving in their sleep. Some people have uh, picked up knives in the kitchen and hurt themselves. Some people have walked out into the middle of the street. Listen, some people have gone distances. There have been people who have even got hit by cars. Some people have uh, fallen off of buildings and balconies because they were sleepwalking. They were unconscious and moving. Listen, can I ask you, how have you hurt yourself because you've been in a state of sleeping? What relationships, yeah, have you, have you gotten yourself into that were toxic because you were constantly in a state of sleeping? What job did you take? What, 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 what business that you try to open that the Lord did not call you to because you were in a constant state of unconsciousness? What ministry did you connect to that you know that the Father did not ordain for you, cannot even see you, cannot even understand you, don't even know why you were there? How did you connect with them? Because you were in a constant state of sleeping, a constant state of dreaming, a constant state of being intoxicated. Can I tell you, being intoxicated is not just with drugs and alcohol, but when you are not sober according to the spirit of the Lord, you will be intoxicated with other things in life that cause a hindrance for you and keep you bound. So what, is, what am I trying to say tonight? This year, we are called to wake up. Listen, somebody type in the chat, wake up, wake up. You don't have time to continue to sleep. You don't have time to dream for the sake of dreaming, but you have to wake up. Why? Because the word of the Lord says that you are of the day and not of the night. Yeah. The word of the Lord says, listen, you've got to make sure that you are alert and sober. That's what you are. You've got to wake up. Don't you know that there are things that the father has placed into your hands that you are unconscious about? Don't you know? Listen, we've been hearing people talk about the fact that you've got to have multiple streams of income. Don't you know that many of you have five streams of income, but because you are asleep in your own life, you don't even know what the Father has placed into your hands? Listen, tonight after you get off this call, I want you to pray that the Lord opens your eyes to what is in you. Open your eyes to what he has put in your hand. Some of you are speakers. Some of you have your jobs. Some of you are authors. Listen, some of you make a bill things. Listen, you have multiple streams of income in your hands, but because you are asleep at the will of your life, you don't even know what the Father has spoken over you. But this is why, come on y'all, this is why I believe that God has called us to be visionaries. If dreams happen when we are asleep, can I tell you that vision comes to us when we are awake? Yes, now we are about to walk into it. Vision comes to us when we are alert, yeah. Vision comes to us when we are conscious and in the spirit, the Lord can begin to download things to you. You are 
driving in your car, walking down the street, and the Lord begins to give you a concept, begins to give you an idea, begins to flash a vision before your eyes, begins to, to show you property, begins to show you land, begins to show you uh, uh, plans for a book, begins to show you all of these various areas of your life because you are conscious. When you have been in prayer and in consistent relationship with the Father, it, if, when you have been fasting and praying, the Lord will begin to download so much to you, listen, where you won't even have the ability, you trying to write it down, you can't even write it down fast enough because he has given it to you because you are alert, you are sober, and you are awake in the spirit. Listen, Habakkuk 2 says to us, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he or she may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. I love this part, but at the end it shall speak, yes, and not lie. The text says, though it tarry, yeah, though it take a long time, though it seem to take years, sometimes it feels like it's taking decades. The text says, wait for it because it will surely come and it will not Tarry. That's what it says. So what does this mean? Vision is the act or power, hear this, of seeing, of conceiving its foresight. Vision is a supernatural appearance that conveys revelation to us. Vision is revelation to us. Revelation is revealed to us by God. This comes via the Holy Spirit. Can I tell you, the revelation that the Father gives to us comes directly from the mind of God. Can I just take a moment to teach and we're gonna walk into the rest of what I want us to do tonight, but I wanna set the stage for what it is so that we understand what we are working with. When we know what we are working with, we will, will begin to handle vision better in our life. Vision comes via the Holy Spirit. This is directly from the mind of God. Listen, the Bible says to us in Matthew 16 and 17, flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee. Yeah, it says, but it is my Father which is in heaven. There are some things about your life, most things about your vision that have to come from God. It's not going to come from flesh. It's not going to come from blood. It's not going to come from your mama. It may not come from your daddy. It's much as I love Oprah, as much as we love Iyanla, as much as love we love Super Sunday, it's not going to come from them. But this thing in your life, come on y'all, this next level in your life is going to come directly from the Father. Listen, that's where it's going to come from. You ain't going to be able to look at any other avenue except from God. Why is this important? Because listen, vision and revelation is the thing that governs and moves your life ahead. This is what the Father communicates to you about the next steps and how you begin to navigate spaces you are in. Many of us would not be as sad and frustrated with our lives if we understood and respected the vision of our life. But the challenge is we don't know it, so in times where it seems like the vision is tarrying, we give up. Yeah, we quit. We abandon vision because it's not moving fast enough. But when we understand how vision works and how God moves, it allows us to be able to encourage ourselves because we know that at some point, this thing has got to come to pass. Listen, I'm hurrying up. Vision or revelation is written. That's what the text says, to write it down. Listen, you've got to make it legible so that it may be easily comprehended. Your vision is not something that you need to write a whole dissertation on, but it can be simple and practical. And you've got to make it visible so that when you read it, you will be able to take it and run with it, not walk with it. The text says, and run with it. Where have you placed your vision in a practical way where you can see it every single day so that you are able to run with it? Your vision should reinvigorate you on days where you feel like you don't want to go ahead. Your vision should motivate you on days where you feel like you are unable to run. You don't have time to walk. The text says when we have vision, we run with it. What does that mean? You've got to begin to put some intentional movement, intentional action behind your vision, behind what the Father has downloaded to you in terms of revelation. Come on, I'm keeping going right now. 
For vision is time sensitive. Somebody put that in the chat. Vision is time sensitive. Can I tell you this? Dreams don't have a timeline. They happen whenever they happen. They occur whenever they occur. But vision has a timeline behind it. That's why the text says that we run. And then it says vision will speak, yeah, and it will not lie. That means that that thing is going to come to pass. You can bank on vision come, coming to pass. It is going to speak for itself, yeah, and it will not lie. So it doesn't matter what people think. It doesn't matter what people say. When God has given you a vision that you have put intentional action behind, your vision will begin to speak for itself. It is going to tell the truth for itself. Though it is tarried, though it is long deferred, though it might feel like it is never coming, you've got to be patient and confidently wait for it. For the Bible says, for it shall surely come to pass and it will not be prolonged. It will not go beyond the appointed time in which it is supposed to break forth. Listen, for many of us, I turned 42 in January. Many of us are watching the clock. We like, okay, Lord, now you a little behind schedule. You, you said that I was going to be able to do this by this time. You, 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 you running behind schedule. But when you understand vision, you know that there are some things that cannot come to be until it is the appropriate time of the Lord. Listen, that, that, that business cannot launch sooner than when God has ordained it. Because listen, there is a specific time and reason in which God has you in the earth to launch that thing at a certain time. So when you go beyond that, or you try to concoct or manufacture your own time, you you then try to you you then put yourself in position to throw off course or abort that in which God is trying to do. So can I tell you I have to I have to train myself to understand and believe wholeheartedly that listen God's timing is sure. God's timing is perfect. Listen God's timing knows when something is supposed to happen, when it is supposed to come forth. God knows if I'm supposed to have a child that my child has to come at a specific time because my child has to do a specific thing in the earth. So if there's delays, I don't know why I keep feeling that in the spirit. If there is delays in children coming forth, even bless the Lord in the delay, because there is a reason why that baby can't come forth till now. There's a reason why that marriage can't come forth till now. Listen, there's a reason why you can't go back to school until a certain time, because there is destiny attached to the thing that is trying to come forth. And when you get outside of the timing of the Lord, you really began, listen, to operate in obedience. You began to operate in witchcraft. And all you do is delay yourself and set yourself further back than you could ever forward. So listen, what am I saying? When we understand the power of dreams and what it means to be a visionary, we will then position ourselves for vision. Because if we don't, if we constantly are in a state of dreaming, can I tell you, you're going to be in this very same place next year at this very same time. Listen, uh, uh, believing for the very same things and you will see no demonstration in your life. And what we are asking God for this year is demonstration. Listen, vision requires action. Vision yields manifestation where there is intentional work. You've got to put some work behind your vision. Dreaming in and of itself produces nothing. Can I tell you, fantasy takes nothing to produce. You can walk around all day long fantasizing. I, I could fantasize that I'm on a yacht. I could, I could fantasize that I, I just walked up to Michael B. Jordan or, or Idris Elba. I could fantasize that that happen, but that means nothing if I'm not, if there's no real investment in that. I can fantasize having an office in a, in a large building, but if, if I'm doing nothing to set myself on track to achieve those things, then that means it will never happen. Fantasy is simply make-believe. There is no investment required in that, but fruition, if you are looking for fruition in your life this year, that's going to take absolutely everything from you. I don't care what age you are. You could be 20 21 or you could be 89. It's still going to take absolutely everything. This is the realization. This is the maturity of a thing. This is understanding that whatever it is that God has in motion for your life is going to take your mind, body, and your spirit in 
order for it to come to pass. You've got to be all in for your own vision this year. You've got to commit to your own vision this year. Many of us commit to the vision of other people. We commit to the vision of our jobs. We commit to the vision of our churches. We commit to the vision of our friends. And all of that is amazing. But in the process of committing to the vision of other people, you cannot abandon your own vision this year. You've got to be in position to stay committed to the vision that God had you. Listen, this year is really a do or die year. This is one of those put up or hush up type of years. You've got to be committed to seeing whatever it is that the Lord showed you in your vision to come to pass. Can I tell you that it's going to cost you everything? When you are moving from fantasy to fruition, it's going to cost you something. What does that mean? It takes, it's going to come with challenges. It's going to come with obstacles, but it doesn't matter. God has given you the grace to overcome all of those things so that you will absolutely see them and walk in them and see the demonstration of them happen in your life. Listen, it takes nothing if you are just dreaming. All you got to do is just stay asleep. But when you are walking in vision, there is a difference. Listen, the difference between people who constantly stay in a state of dreaming and those who move in vision is maturity. The difference between people who walk in fantasy from those who move to fruition is maturity. Children dwell in fantasy. That's all they can do, play all day long, dress up, do all these wonderful things, and it's great. But when you come into the maturity of an adult, of, of a woman who is sober, a woman who is wise, that means that you understand the power of being awake. You understand the power of vision, and you position yourself to receive the vision for your life so that you are able to move forward. Listen, the revelation in which God has spoken over your life, you will begin to respect the vision. A part of our problem is for some of you, you don't even respect what God has spoken over you. Yeah. You don't respect your testimony. You don't respect the vision of what God has given you. You don't respect the weight of who you are. And until you can respect what God has placed in you, until you can respect what God has placed on you, until you can respect the vision over your life, you will never be able to hit your highest level and your full potential. What, what, do, what do you mean, Pastor Carey, by saying you don't respect it? Because you esteem the testimony of other people higher than, than your own. You esteem what other people have gone through when, uh, when the same person would not have been able to last a day in your shoes, when, the, when other people would not have been able to make it in your shoes. And it's wonderful to esteem other people, but you, you don't have to downplay, here we go that word again, you don't have to lower your value and your worth because you esteem others. You can love others, praise others, salute others, but then also know that there is something unique that the Lord is placed on you. Stop laying down your anointing. Stop uh, casting aside your testimony. You've got to carry that thing this year because all of that is tied into the vision for your life. Listen, the thing that you respect about the vision of your life will shape how you perceive your life in light of the vision that the Father has given to you. Now listen, I want us to jump into a few things before we go. Listen, time has already gone by. This should have really been two parts. Hearts. Uh, <laughs> but I know that I don't want to keep you all all night tonight, but I want to make sure I wanted to make sure that I laid the foundation for what it means to move from dreaming and then began to understanding vision at another level so that we can walk through it. Listen, Joel A. Barker said vision without action is merely a dream. Did y'all hear that? Vision without action is merely a dream. Action, hear this, without vision just passes time. Oh, that's so good because vision gives direction to what we are doing. This is why I always say that women are God are, of God are called to move in purpose and not ambition. I don't even have time to talk about that tonight, but we are not ambitious women. People who are ambition, ab, ambitious don't care who they step on. They don't care who they cut down. They don't care how they sell their soul. But when you are purpose driven, you know that there is a vision for your life 
that is ordained by God. And so there is a way in which you move that you can't do things the way that everybody else do things. You know you can't try to cut people down. As a matter of fact, you know you don't need to cut anybody down because when you are governed by purpose, you are on a path, hallelujah, that has been anointed and ordained by the Lord. So it don't, it don't matter who's sitting in the seat that you, that you know God has called you to. It don't matter who occupies the business that you know God has told you is yours. It don't matter because when you move in purpose, you know that that vision is going to unfold. So stop calling yourself, oh, I'm an ambitious woman. No, you are not. You are a purpose-filled woman because ambition can be dangerous. Ambition to me, listen, now somebody else may say something different, is directly connected to a Luciferian spirit. Listen, Satan was ambitious and look what happened to him. Listen, I don't have time. I got to keep moving, but y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. And so listen, action without vision just passes the time. Vision with action can change the world. Listen, someone said little girls with dreams become women with vision. I'm going to say that again. I just talked about all of that. Little girls with dreams become women with vision. When you mature, when you grow up, you move from that stage of being a little girl who just dreams and operates in fantasy, but you become, you become a powerful woman of God that begins to move in vision and who op ultimately changes the world. So listen, there is a form that I gave to you all that you should have been able to download it. If you have your form, say yes. If not, um, I want to see, can we share it on the screen? Come on, y'all. Oh, you guys have your form. Yes. Come on, girls. I love it. Yes, you guys have it. So there is a form that I want you to begin. You all, can I take a, my mouth a little dry? <laughs> there is a form that I created, and I wanted us to work from it because I want that to be somewhat as a roadmap for you. Yeah, as you're mapping out a lot of things for the rest of this year. So when you go to the top of the form, listen, let me pull it up and make sure I'm looking at it with you. When you go to this form, the very first thing that you see is your personal mission statement, but I wanna stop there before we go into it. Yes, Dana just put the, uh, Texina, she just put the link in the chat so that you can access it right there. Terry, you can get it there. Annette, look at the link that uh, Dana shared and you can get it right there. Okay, so before we go to this form, one of the things that I want you to do, and I didn't put it on here, but I want you to have this. And someone mentioned this earlier in the chat, but I didn't get a chance to call them out. I want you to come up with a word for the year. What is your word for the year? If you already know it, I want you to go ahead and put it in the chat. What's your word for the year? Is your word intentional? Oh, come on. I see Sister Tanya, manifestations, tenacity. Come on, better. Yes. <laughs> Sister Barbara say no foolishness. <laughs> Sister Barbara, those are my words too. Accelerated, elevate. Come on. Listen, y'all are on it. Come on. Determined, bold. Yes. Metamorphosis. I love that freedom. That's my word for the year. Fulfillment, change, next level, focus, complete now, breakthrough. Come on. Y'all are on top of it. Achievement, focus, confidence, perseverance, manifest, abide. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yes, I want you to put your word for the year at the top of your form, if, even if you have to write it on there, because I want that word to be the thing that really kind of helps you to stay focused, helps to guide you throughout the year. Restoration, yeah. Mindfulness, I love it. Expectation, yeah. I want you to find, if you don't have it, it's okay. But I want you to think about that after you get off tonight. I want you to write your word for the year down, okay? Put it at the top of your form. Then the next thing that I want you to do is you've got to have a personal mission statement. What is your, some people call it a vision statement, whatever you want to call it. What is 
is your personal mission statement for your life. Listen, you can do it for the year, but really your vision is to support your overall life. It's not just for the year. So what is that? Some people are saying, okay, Pastor Kerry, what, what, is, what does that mean? Your personal mission statement defines who you are as a person. It explains how you aim to pursue that in which you purpose and why um, it matters so much to you. Can I tell you, it doesn't have to be long. It can be something as simple as to be a leader to my team, live a balanced life and make a difference. Some people are simpler than that to inspire others and achieve great things. I pulled some of these examples. Another one is to thrive in my journey through life and learn life's lessons along the way. I want you to write down your purpose, listen, your mission, your personal mission statement for the year. What is that? What is your mission statement for the year? Because this is going to be the thing that helps to streamline you. Listen, to help guide you into your goals, to help guide you into your vision for the year. What is that? I want you to chop, jot that down. If you have it, I want you to go ahead and put it in the, in the chat. Somebody say, uh, can't stop, won't quit. I love it. We driving. Come on. Yeah. I want you to put that down. What is your personal mission statement for the year. And on your form, you can just write that in. So if you want to transfer that to your vision board, you can. Okay. The next thing that I want you to do that's on your worksheet is I want you to think about the top five goals and intentions for this year. What are the top five things? And I know there might be other things that you want to do and that's okay. But I want just for the sake of time tonight, I want you to think about what are the top five things that you want to accomplish this year. Listen, what are the things in your health, in your fight? We're going to walk through some of those things, but I want you to think about what are the top five things that you want to accomplish this year? Why is that important? Because when you have your word for the year, when you have your personal uh, mission statement, when you have your top five goals and intentions, what that does is help to streamline your life. It helps to streamline your intentions. Uh, it, it helps to streamline your activities. It streamlines your relationships. It streamlines your time. If any of you have heard me speak um, in other environments, one of the things that you will hear me say a million times over, uh, Dr. Miles Monroe said that when you understand, listen, purpose and vision over your life, it streamlines your life. That means that you can't be all over the place. You can't be at everything. You are focused on a goal. You are taking a straight path in order to get to where God has you. And so you, you listen, you know, this is the place, this is the path that I got to take. There's a level of discipline that happens with a streamlined life and that's what you've got to walk in. And part of that is when your life is streamlined, you are disciplined, you then begin to manage your time differently. And you, many of you have heard me teach on this. You manage your time differently. You begin to manage the hours of the day differently because what has happened is we have these five, 10 year, one year goals, but we don't know how to manage our day-to-day -day life. And so we never accomplish those goals because we don't have an agenda for every day. We don't know how to work work our day. If you don't know how to work an hour, you'll hear me say this a million times, you won't know how to work a day. If you don't know how to work a day, you won't know how to work a week. If you don't know how to work a week, you won't know how to work a month. And then what happens is your year flies by and you feel um, under accomplished because you didn't work your schedule white. Can I tell you, you got enough time in the day. You do. you got more than enough time in the day, but you've got to put some strategy behind your day so that you are able to, to, uh, to accomplish the goals that you have put in place. Listen, so you have your area with you where you can write down at least your top five goals and intentions, and you can do more, but I want you to be able to start with this because here's another thing. When we write down all of these lofty goals, it becomes overwhelming to us, and it becomes overwhelming because there is no strategy strategy behind it. We don't begin to accomplish it. We don't see the manifestation of it. And so then we feel like, okay, I'm not moving ahead. Write down a couple of things that you know tie into the vision for your life that you can begin to put strategy behind and work towards. Okay. Listen, somewhat the Bible says in Proverbs 29 and 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. 
Where there is no vision, the people die. Where there is no vision, you cannot move ahead. And so for your life this year, vision is paramount so that you are able to listen, become every, I don't listen, you can be a hundred years old on this Zoom right now. If you are alive, you still have vision. There is still opportunity for you to move forward. And so you have to have that because vision is what gives us life. Vision is what causes us to be able to move ahead. Listen, someone once said, we are limited not by our abilities, but by our vision. I told you earlier, according to, you, according to your faith, be it unto you. According to your faith, attached to the vision that God is giving you for your life, that's what you will have. So listen, you can't be mad at anybody else that you feel is blowing up, anybody else that you feel is prospering. Have you ever had an idea or a concept and you're like, man, the Lord gave that to me, but you didn't move on it. And so somebody else moved on it. They're now a multimillionaire or they're now moving in a certain space because you didn't do it. It's going to get done. So either you can make the money or you can let somebody else make the money. Either you can, can, can begin to walk into glorious areas of your life. Life, or you will continue to sit on the sidelines and watch other people do it because you will not move on your vision. This year, you've got to do it. Okay, so I want you to just jump over to your form and my time is running out, but I want you to jump over to the next page of your form. Listen, in this area, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a glimpse into how I plan my own goals, into how I map out um, vision in my own life. So listen, there are some areas, these are the top areas of my life that I typically write my goals down in, that I put in my vision book, and it really helps me, and I wanted to share that with you. Now, you can list as many as you want to in any of these areas. It's totally up to you, but I wanna just quickly walk you through what that looks like. Listen, what are your goals spiritually? What are your goals spiritually? We have goals for money. We have goals for everything else. But what are your spiritual goals? Some of my spiritual goals uh, are is to be more persistent in my prayer life this year, to pray three times a day. For some of you, it might be to read your word every day. What are your spiritual goals? For many of you, there are um, prophetic gifts that, have, uh, that are lying dormant in you. There are gifts of hospitality that are lying dormant in you. What are some areas, uh, your spiritual areas of who you are that you are committed to nourishing this year. You've got to think about those things as well. Write a couple of things down so that you can begin to put a uh, practical strategy behind those spiritual things. What are the mental and emotional goals or intentions that you have for yourself this year? For me, it is to be more consistent in going to my therapist, right? What are yours? Yours might be to go to, to the therapist for the first time. Yours might be uh, to, to, to get deliverance and breakthrough from a certain thing. What, what are the mental and emotional um, intentions that you have for yourself this year? Now, if, these may not be what you have, but for me, I needed to have them. There was a certain way that I wanted to begin to be stronger in my emotions and in my mental health because we know that that matters. You've got to put a couple of things down for that. What does that look like for you? Okay, what is your physical health and well? Wellness. Listen, we all either want to lose something, gain something, you know, be healthier. What does that look like? Listen, get you a partner. I'm, I'm going to tell you, you need a, an accountability partner really for all of your vision, all of your goals. But, but, but I've learned that the hardest area is oftentimes the physical health area. Can I tell y'all, I hate getting up in the in the morning to go to the gym. So I had to get a trainer so that I would get up. I have to sometimes have somebody call me and wake me up. That's just how much I hate it. But you know what? There are some things that I want to enhance about my physical health. Can I tell you, I don't care how you're shaped. I don't care what you hate about yourself. I don't care. You can change it. Do you hear me? You can change it. There are trainers, there are videos, there is help. You just gotta be accountable and put the discipline in for where you want to go. I don't care if you are having internal issues. I found out 
um, two years ago that I had fibroids. I didn't even know, had no idea. I just was experiencing a lot of pain in my, in my abdomen. I didn't know where it was from, had never had any, any indication that anything was wrong with me. It had gotten to a point where I was feeling so uncomfortable that I decided to go to the doctor to find out what was going on, found out I had three fibroids. These are things that we don't even talk about all of the time. There was nobody that I could pick up the phone and call outside of my mama and say, hey, the doctor said I have fibroids. What does that mean? One was pushing up against my uterine wall. And so we didn't know if I was going to have to have surgery to get those things taken out. But can I tell you, in addition to going to the doctor to see what things you can do or what help is available for you, even in those areas, we know that the blood still works. I still believe in the doctor and the power of the blood of the lamb. And so listen, if there are areas about your physical health that you want the Lord to transform this year, listen and be in prayer about, write those things down. I, I began to write that down and those fibroids began to shrink. Listen, let me tell you, I didn't have to have a surgery. Thank the Lord. Some people may have had to, but, but, and that's okay. It's whatever it is that's going to bring you to a healthy place, but whatever you need began to put it down. Yes. Somebody said, know your body. Don't be afraid to go get checks up. For some of you, your goals might just be go to the doctor this year. Some of us are so afraid to go to the doctor. It is okay. Go to the doctor this year. There might be things going on in you that you don't even fully understand. Don't be afraid. Put them down. Get you a wellness part, par, uh, partner. I don't care if you just walk around your neighborhood. Sometimes I just get up in the morning. I go walk around the neighborhood. You know, I go to the belt line and I walk. And maybe we can get together, get some women together, and we just get to go walking together as a group. We can do that. Do, take it one day at a time. All of the weight ain't going to fall off overnight. Every part of your body might not be what you want it to be overnight, but that's okay because it took you years to get there. Give yourself some grace to start where you are so that you can get it off and you can keep on moving. Listen, don't be intimidated by what somebody else looked like. Listen, Spanx does wonders, huh? Body magic does wonders. Do you hear me? You start where you are, where you are most comfortable. Get you a partner so that you can get Get going. Listen, your love and relationships. What does that look like? Listen, I'm like, Lord, okay. When when the love coming? What 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 we do? <laughs> what we doing? So on my vision board, you know, I, I want to be able to have a loving, healthy, fulfilling relationship. To me, that leads to marriage. For somebody else, it might just be that you want you want to date, you want to meet new people. For some some people, it might be you want to make your marriage healthier. Write that down. The Bible tells us to write. What is the vision for your marriage? Begin to write that down. And it might not be that there is anything romantic that you desire, but one of the things that I want to do this year is I want to connect with more women. I want to I want to build healthier relationships with women. I'm an Introvert. And many of you are introverts as well, which means that, you know, you people might think you're standoffish, but you're not. You're just shy. And your natural, uh, your natural disposition is to keep to yourself. Write that down. If you want people, the Lord to add great women to your life, great people to your life, great platonic relationships, write that down. Financial intentions. You know, one of my financial intentions this year is I want to get my credit score to where I want it to be, right? I want to pay off all of my short-term debt. I've listed these things out specifically. Write them down so that you can measure them and get close to them. Whatever yours are, you might want to save $10,000 this year. You might want to save $1,000. It doesn't matter. Write them down so that you can get there. Um, your business your, or your career, you might want to launch a business. Last year, I launched a boutique, Shop 180 West. I launched that last year. Now my intentions for the business this year is to expand a little bit more, to grow a little bit more. For you, some of you want to do the same thing, or it could be something completely different. Write it down. Down so that you can begin to start where you are. Your career, you, you may want to go higher in your company. You may want um, um, elevation in your business, whatever it might be. 
Write specifically write down what you want, not aloof, not just grow in my career. No, specifically, how do you want to grow? I want to become the regional director of X, Y, and Z business. I want to become the CEO of this business. Write it down. Educational pursuits, what you might want to go back to school. You might want to go get your bachelor's. You may want to go get your master's, or you may even want to continue to a doctoral level. Write it down. Same thing. Listen, and then I put this on here. This is important. Exposure is in important. You can have all of these goals, but to me, well-rounded, balanced women are exposed women. Women who travel, women who go to museums, women who read. Um, this, My intentions this year for this area and exposure are, there are a couple of places I want to go. I want to go to Dubai this year. I want to go uh, to the Maldives this year. So there are, I want to go to Paris this year. And you might say, listen, Pastor Carrie, traveling is not my thing, but what is your thing? Go to a museum, eat at a new restaurant. I'm telling you, these practical things help you grow. I, I plan to read a book a week this year. Listen, and you might say, that's I can't do that, but I want to read a book a month. You can. As a matter of fact, our church has a book a month for you to read. Learning a scripture a month. Listen, what things it, the things that expose you help you become well-rounded and more balanced. Listen, and then the last area is what are the mind-blowing things that you want? Like, what are the things that you you scared to even say out loud that you want the Lord to? do? What are those things that, you know, dropped into your, you, you, you want to, you want to, I don't know, buy 15 acres of land. You don't even know why you're thinking this, but it's something that dropped in your vision. Write that down. What are the mind blowing things that you are leaving open for the father to do for you this year? Listen, so I want you to really walk through a lot of the things, listen, on your sheet, use it as a guide. Don't rush through it. Begin to pray. Listen, put you some music on, get you some in your downtime where you're comfortable and begin to write these things out as you are led by the Holy Spirit. Listen, I have held y'all <laughs> for too long tonight, but I pray that there was something about our time together tonight that blessed you. Um, I pray that there was something about our time together tonight that causes you to look at vision differently so that you are able to move differently this year. I think I have time to maybe answer one or two questions. Do you have a question before we jump off? I want to do that. You can go ahead and put that in the chat. I hope you guys got some good information tonight. And these are the things that I want us to continue to do because we are powerful as spiritual women. But listen, we've also got to be be balanced women. We can't, you, 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 you know how to speak in tongues, but, but you don't know how to do nothing else. You, you got to be able to live. It is not a sin to live and have a balanced and healthy life. And that's what we do when we are executing our vision. Listen, so I'm going to check and see. Yes, 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 yes. I see you all. What? Will you be speaking on how to grow a business? Um, yes, and I will be also bringing in some people that can talk about that as well, that can help you start your business, scale your business, and really begin to grow your business. So if that's something that you all want to see, absolutely, we will do it. Is there anything else? Yeah. Come on, I'm seeing. Thank you so much, Sister Rhonda. I appreciate you. Love y'all so much. Um, let's see. We will, I'll, let me check and see if we will have a replay um, of the session. I actually, was this class going to be monthly? So I believe right now, according to our manifesto, our sister circles are, I think, every other month. It, it might be every month or every other month, but what we'll do is we will have a different focus, um, a different focus every month for our sister circle. I'll be bringing in some speakers that you love, and outside of our sister circles, we're getting ready to do some other things too. So just be watching for that. That's why I'm telling y'all, download that application. I need you a part of this team. I need you to be a part of this focus group because that helps me know the direction that you want to go in. I'm praying and interceding, um, asking God to lead me. But a part of that is getting help from all of you because I want to serve you in a way that causes you to go, grow spiritually in your personal life, in your professional life, so that we are created, creating balanced and well-rounded women. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Any other questions? I'm going through. I want to make sure. Okay, somebody told me to look at my DM. I will. Um, anything else? Can the link uh, be emailed to the worksheet? 
application, yes, Sister Anita, we will make sure um, that we email that to you. We need, the, I know y'all, and we're gonna be able to do more prayerfully. We will be back in the building um, by Easter. Um, and so we'll be able to do these gatherings to, together. Some things will be virtual, but I really want us to connect um, and get together for a lot of things. Y'all, we got some exciting things that's gonna happen this year, but I pray that this night set the tone, listen, for us to get our fervor back, for us to get our, you know, our, our what we need back in ourselves as we execute the rest of the year. I I want you, I want us to begin some accountability groups as well. Some of us are afraid to connect. And so I want all of our women to be, we're going to be putting some things together where there are women that you can connect with, um, even in your age demographic. Listen, so that you can be accountable with, break you out of your shell. Um, so many of us don't trust women and we want to bind that and break that so that we are able to move forward in healthy ways. And so I love you all. I'm going to pray. Um, so that we can get out of here. I'm still looking. You all are welcome. It was my pleasure. I hope that it blessed you so, 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 so much tonight. And we're going to, um, yes, yes, we're looking at doing a retreat. See, this is why I need y'all for these focus groups. Yes, we're looking at doing a retreat, a conference, and a whole lot more this year. I'm super excited, you all, about what we're going to be able to do. So listen, wherever you are, I just want you to just settle your mind uh, really briefly, we're going to go to the Lord uh, in prayer so that he seals our night. I'm praying um, that, the, that the Holy Spirit keeps you up even tonight, you know, looking at your vision, looking at your goals, that when you wake up after some sweet sleep tonight, that there is fire and focus in you. I bind the spirit of procrastination, a lack of focus, but that you are more focused than you have ever been. Father, we thank you so much, God. We thank you, God, that we felt your love tonight, dear God. Lord, I thank you that my sisters, my aunts, my cousins, my grandmothers, all tonight, God, are more empowered and inspired than they have ever been, God. Lord, I don't care what age they are, Father. Help them to know, God, that you have called them for such a time as this, God. And there is great vision, glory to God, that is over their life, Father, that you have anointed and appointed them to walk in, Father. God, collectively, we come together, God, not just praying individually for ourselves, but, Father, we pray for all of our sisters on this call, God, that there would be no enemy no principality, Father, that would block or can distort the vision, God, that you spoke over our life from the beginning of time, Father. And we declare, God, that we shall see the goodness of the Lord, hallelujah, in the land of the living, in our life, in our sister's life, God. For when her vision manifests, dear God, we celebrate and we know that she will celebrate when our vision manifests. So God, we thank you for every tool that you've given to us. God, we thank you for what you have placed in our hands, Father. This year, we will steward it better. God, we take back our year from the enemy, God. We baptize it. We call it blessed, dear God. And it shall bear fruit. Hallelujah. This year shall bear fruit. And not just any fruit, but it will be fruit that remains, Father. We thank you, glory to God, for what you are doing in our life. God, we thank you that this year, hallelujah, that the last three years will begin to make sense, dear God. We thank you, God, that this year, Father, that you will begin, oh God, to move in us in a way that we've never seen you move before. We thank you for great fire. We thank you for great intercession. We thank you for great boldness. We thank you for great confidence. We thank you for new connections, dear God, for they all will yield to the glory and the honor, Father, of you in our life. And we love you so much, Master. We can't even say enough about you, for you are good to us. You are loving and kind to us. And for that, we tell you thank you. Listen, if you believe it, <laughs> just say amen wherever you are. Listen, love y'all so much. And until next time, listen, look out for, I think Dana has already put it, say it again, the leadership application. I need a team. I need y'all to help me. And for these focus groups, anything that's on your heart and mind, always feel free to email. Love y'all. Have a good night. <laughs>